Martha? Yes. Martha, what happened? You need something. Aren't you at home? Where are you? What? A surprise? You're at the station. That is really a surprise. Well, it took your cousin Jenny's arrival to give you courage. We'll have to thank her. Martha! Martha, dear. But why? You didn't have to come. Are you all right? Oh. 
I'm Marcus, Miss Jenny. I'm Miss Martha's driver. How do you do, Marcus? My pleasure. Is this all the baggage, Miss? Yes, I sent the rest. It'll arrive tomorrow or the day after. We were unbelievably lucky. It's been a success everywhere. But above all, in Latin America and Canada. Look at this. It's a recording we made on the road. A souvenir of our tour. As a soloist, I was popular. But our success was due to the hard work of the chorus also. How's Uncle Ralph? Is he any better? His heart. As usual. He suffers so, doesn't he? Poor old thing. But at least here he can relax, avoid getting excited. Where did you stop? The engine's overheating. I'd better turn it off before it explodes. Won't we be able to get home? It's not far. Far enough to burn the motor right out. I'll see if I can get someone to help us. Is it always so cheerful in Martigny? No, Martha. No marriage. A career and matrimonial problems don't go hand in hand. Unfortunately, I had no luck. We'll have to keep going. Did you meet anyone, Marcus? No. Why do you ask? It's very odd. A stranger came up to the car just after you disappeared. Are you sure? Peculiar. Would you take off your glasses, please? them on again now? Yes. The fog can play tricks with the imagination. Have a good trip, Miss Jenny. I'm Mrs. Britton, the housekeeper. I know you're irreplaceable. You are too kind, Miss. Please come in. Rosalie, take the bags up. Oh, all right. It's nice to be back. Jenny. Uncle Ralph. <laughs> Here we are all together. Just the way it used to be. I have something for you. Oh, really? Zombies, voodoo, demons, mm -hmm. and Afro-Cuban witches. Mm -hmm. There's enough here to rob you of a month's sleep. Huh? You are kind. It's wonderful. A most appropriate gift, Jenny. Mm -hmm. I got them in Brazil. Huh? They're very rare. I'm sure. I have a surprise for you too, Martha. I found it in the house in London, among your father's old papers. You'll see, it will make you happy. Parents, 
children and teachers of St. James School, I have the honor to present Miss Martha Caldwell. Do you remember what I did at school just to present the Christmas recital? You were there too, weren't you? Mm -hmm. If my memory doesn't fail me, Martha was 13 years old that day. Thank you, everyone. Now I'm going to recite to you a piece from Alice in Wonderland. Fury. Fury said to a mouse, whom he met in the house, let us both go to trial. I will prosecute you. Come, I'll take no denial. We must have the trial. For really this morning, I've nothing to do. Said the mouse to the cur. Such a trial, dear sir. <laughs> I know you're going to like it here. Look at yes. this. You celebrate the circumstances. You must show me around. Things must have changed a lot since I was here. Find these very good. Certainly, I'd be glad. What a sweet girl she is. I'm so fond of her. I'm not surprised. We all are. Yes, Martha and I have always been very close. Especially after. After a great loss. What a terrible thing. Losing both her parents in a railroad disaster. Mm. Her father was able to save her life. He threw her out of the window of the train just in time. It was really horrible. Martha saw her parents die among the flames. Since then, she hasn't been able to speak. Fifteen mm. years. And she's never had the courage to walk into a railroad station since. I knew you would be able to do it. Today you have taken a most important step forward. And along this road, you have to continue. You see, only a strong emotion attached to the memory of the past can give you the courage you need and can help you to regain your speech. I can guess who this is. Good evening, everyone. Please I know forgive you're me late. for. We're beginning to get used to your lack of punctuality. Good evening, Laurent. How are you? Huh. Oh, but you don't know Jenny. Jenny, this is Dr. Laurent. He's the only eligible bachelor in Martigny. He's a thorn in the side of all the jealous husbands in town. Don't listen to your uncle. He finds the devil everywhere. What happened? The fuse must have blown. And some candles. Mrs. Britton, the lights. Christina, you scared us. But it's my birthday, Uncle. No need to get scared because the lights went out. It was meant as a surprise. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear. Come on now. Let's see if you can blow out all the candles at once. Take a really deep breath. Good girl, you did it. Your niece is just adorable. Adorable. She's a human avalanche, that child. Since her parents returned to America, I, I don't know what I'd do if it weren't for dear Martha. I really couldn't cope with her. Good night. I can't thank you enough. It was a marvelous evening. See you soon, I hope. Martha! Thank you again. I really had a wonderful birthday. Bye. Thank you. And such a surprise, my first evening back. You should be in bed at this hour. You know very well in your condition. Young man, I know that. But it just isn't worth it, living badly in order to live a few more days. You are a sadist. Okay, but don't forget to take the drops. No, I won't. <laughs> Good night, Doctor. Good night. Goodbye, Martha. I'm very happy for you. See you soon.
Fury. Fury said to a mouse, whom he met in the house, let us both go to trial. I will prosecute you. Is that you, Rob? Marcus? Marcus, you there? Have you seen Miss Jenny? I knocked on her door, but there was no answer. Good morning. Hi, Hi Martha. Martha. Morning, Martha. I'll leave her with you for a couple hours, if you don't mind. <laughs> look what the pharmacist gave me. Isn't he cute? Just look at his tail. <laughs> <laughs> the way it curls up at the end, he's really silly. It's so sweet. I'm going to let him sleep right in bed with me. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, here's a mail. Hold still, Twitty. Here's a letter for you. Hey, don't do that. Kitty, come back here. Kitty, she's a very naughty cat, don't you think so, Martha? I shall have to train her, and the only way to do that would be to give her a few of the... Oh, no, you don't, you wicked creature. Uh, one instant... Oh, there's paint on your foot. He's completely smothered in red paint. Look at it. It's all over my dress and my hand. What's wrong, Martha? What is it? one of you has seen or heard anything. Write that down, Mallow. According to the medical examiner, the murder took place between uh, 11 and midnight. You were the last to leave the house, Doctor. Yes, and it was almost 11 o'clock. 
I remember having a look at my watch. What time was it when you returned with the car? I don't know precisely. But when I put the Mercedes in the garage, it was late. What did you do afterwards? I went to sleep in the servants' quarters. Notice anything that seemed suspicious? No, nothing. Only that I... Go on. I mean, I'm not sure that... Go on, don't be afraid. You've nothing to lose. Well, it's hard to say. Well? I'm sure I glimpsed a car parked by the garage with its lights out. Were you able to recognize this car? Mm -hmm. Yes, it was my rover inspector. May I know why you returned to the house, Dr. Laurent? I realized I'd forgotten my bag in the entranceway. Then I saw the lights were out, and I thought everyone was sleeping. I didn't want to disturb anyone, so I returned to my car and went back into town. Therefore, your bag must still be here. Would you mind looking for it? You agree with that statement? It isn't true that all the lights had been turned out. Mrs. Britton's, for example, was still on. I saw it. And the doctor looked right up at that window. Mrs. Britton was looking out as if she was waiting for him. Dr. Laurent got out of his car and, after acknowledging her, went into the garage. After a while, he came out again and signaled for her to come down. But she refused and disappeared inside, turning off the light. That's all, Inspector. Have you anything to add, Mrs. Britton? No, something to subtract. I will not believe this. This... This nonsense. These insinuations. Inspector, everything's all right. It really was in the entranceway. You really aren't thinking of suspecting anyone present, are you? No, Professor. Rather, I'm convinced that the murder must be attributed to a maniac. Perhaps a sex maniac. What would you have us believe, Inspector? Last night. Three hours before Miss Jenny, another young lady was murdered. A short distance from here, and her body was thrown in a ditch. Have mercy on the soul of your servant, Jenny Ascot, and grant that, freed from the stains of her mortal life, <laughs> Mrs. Britton, quick. Miss Martha, what's the matter? What's happening, Doctor? Someone was just here a second ago. He was staring at Miss Caldwell. Doctor, come here. Look at this. What can it mean? That person probably lost it. Do you realize, Doctor, that Jenny Ascot and that poor student were both young and fair-haired? It's really as though, if my hypothesis is correct, whoever it is now has set his sights on Miss Colwell. I only glimpsed him for a second, but his eyes were those of a madman, or more likely, a drug addict. Two women are already dead, and I want to avoid Martha Caldwell being the third. Martha? I'm sorry, but you are particularly vulnerable. You must be very careful. However, we will do the best we can to give you protection. Hmm, it's strange. It's clearly a black magic symbol. You see, the goat, according to demoniacal tradition, represents Satan. Therefore, I'd say that it is a type of incarnation of the devil. Hmm? No, dear, also today. 
The cult of the devil has never ceased. It's strange, but you know, devil worshippers have always flourished. There are people that have hell in their souls. Do you remember the case of the witches of Bel Air a few years ago? It was a sudden reaction. No one knows why. Mm, but sometimes evil explodes in unrestrained manifestations. I could be wrong, but I think that the man who lost that medallion is a devil worshipper, a wretched creature possessed by a perverse desire for blood. <laughs> to have disturbed you like this, Miss Caldwell, but it's a rule and we have to abide by it. The baggage arrived today on the 4.15 p.m. train. There, you see. It's addressed to Jenny Ascot, Martigny. I'm afraid that since the owner is deceased, I must ask for your cooperation if you would check through the contents before taking the baggage with you. Go on. Regulations. But, uh, Miss Caldwell. My diary. I'm so glad to see you. They always leave me alone during afternoon service. You know, Kitty disappeared today, and I haven't any idea where he's gone to. Martha, I was just about to get into my car when I saw you running into the church. What happened? You seem so upset. And how come you're alone without Marcos? Or Mrs. Britton. You've been very silly. Aren't you aware of the risk you're taking? Under no condition are you to leave the house. Well, come on, Martha. I'll take you home. Goodbye, Christina. Give my regards to your uncle. Come back soon, Martha. 
Look, I have a present for you. I bought it with my own savings, you know. Do you like Snoopy? Promise that you'll always take him with you. I was just about to go to the police station a little while ago. Now, I don't know if I should tell you this, Martha, but something occurred to me. You see, when Durant reconstructed Jenny's murder, there was something that didn't make sense. You know, just a little thing that could change the entire course of the investigation. Sorry I left you alone, but I went to buy cigarettes around the corner. And when I came back, I couldn't find you. The fog had come down so thick it was impossible to see anything. Please accept my apologies. All right, Marcos. I'll accompany Miss Caldwell. Now, listen to me carefully, Martha. I remember very well that when I left the garage that night, I closed the gate, and it locked behind me. You see, the gate has an automatic release. Therefore, how did the murderer ever get in? Precisely. There weren't any signs of anyone trying to break the lock. Therefore, someone had to open the gate from the inside. But that would mean... No, it can't be. Unfortunately, the inspector is away. I think he'll return late this evening. If it's something urgent, you can always tell me. And that's what I'm here for. No, nothing urgent. I'll telephone him tomorrow morning. By the way, Doctor, it appears there's news regarding the sex maniac who's on the loose around here. I'd say they had a black nurse here. Here's the proof, the black wafer. The footprints indicate only one person. The stranger that spied on my niece at the cemetery? Exactly. I had you come here to give your opinion. It's very important considering your knowledge in this field. What relation can the two separate crimes possibly have? Well, usually the Satanists kill women. You see, Inspector, Women are symbolically tied to the mother of Christ. Therefore, if they don't succumb to Satan, they come to be considered as vile beings, the ideal victims for perverse sacrifices. I get it. If he's not to be regarded as a sex maniac, it means he's something worse. Inspector. I guess it is. Or fiend. Professor, I've got to warn you to watch Miss Martha very closely. No, thank you. Isn't Dr. Laurent coming tonight? The police discovered the hiding place of the murderer this afternoon. He seems to have disappeared into thin air, just like a demon. I understand. You mean that the garage door was closed, that the killer wasn't able to enter. Therefore, we'll have to suppose that someone, maybe even Jenny, opened the door from inside. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Who is it?
whoever it was didn't say anything. And then they hung up. It must have been a wrong number. Well, it's bedtime. It's getting late. Dear, would you mind fixing my usual medicine? Mrs. Britton, I advise you to close everything very well, doors and windows. There, they're all locked now. You can go to sleep if you like. Oh, you're right. The garage. I hate to tell you, but I can't take you shopping tomorrow as the car's broken down. And you tell me this at this hour? It's the carburetor. I wasn't aware of it until a few minutes ago. All right, I'll go. You guard the house and try to fix the car. I'll try. Good night. You. Everything back to normal at the villa? Is Miss Martha all right? Glad Is to there hear anything it. else you need? No, thank you. Right. Excuse me saying this, but as mayor of this town, I feel that it's my duty to clear up a few things. Have you seen the way that fear has paralyzed this place? There isn't a soul out on the streets. Anyway, that inspector seemed to me. Well, I expect that you have a better idea who committed those murders than he has. Yes, I have an idea who might have committed these crimes, but then who doesn't? Why don't you ask Father Martin's opinion? Good evening. I've come straight from Perpignan. And to tell the truth, I thought I'd surprise you both. Has uh, something happened, Professor? Well, it's Mrs. Britton. She went on her bike to Martigny before breakfast. Martha wasn't feeling well today, so she stayed in her room until five o'clock when I called her for tea. That's when she realized that Mrs. Britton hadn't come back yet. So she came running to warn me. It's 7.35. Why haven't you called the police? Oh, we immediately sent Marcos to search for her. Perhaps she stayed in town. To visit someone. Come on, Martha. Try to calm down. You'll only make the situation worse. What have you got on your trousers, Doctor? 
It's blood. Did you hurt yourself? Oh, it's uh, nothing. I, uh, I treated a workman who had had an accident. It must be a drop of his blood. He was covered in it. Would you answer that for me, please? Yes. No, I'm Dr. Laurent. You can tell me, Sergeant. Hmm. In the woods of San Gervais. About two kilometers from here. Yes, certainly. Body, Mr. Day. Malheur, we'll continue to search the woods. Put up roadblocks and send somebody to town. We have to stop anyone who can possibly be a suspect. Is that clear? Okay. He must be hidden somewhere, for God's sake. I'm sure we get him. I'll bet my pension on it. The only thing this search is accomplishing is keeping us all awake. a can of meat, sir, nothing else. How do you explain this strange discovery, Durant? What does it mean? That the dogs are hungry, Mr. Day. They've been running around for a long time. We're losing time here. As far as I'm concerned, the only valid clue we have for now is this. tell you since yesterday. I also spoke about it with Dr. Laurent. I hoped he would be able to advise us. You see, I think it's a good idea for you to leave Martigny for a while. Tomorrow, right after Mrs. Britton's funeral, Laurent will take you to Perpignan. You will certainly feel more secure down there. No, Martha, no. I'll stay here. I want to follow this thing closely. You can take advantage of the time to redecorate the apartment. You've been wanting to do it over for a long time.
Now let us pray for the soul of Annie Britton. I hear that you've decided to leave tonight. That's smart of you. Let me tell you, I don't feel safe either. Sorry, Martha. We'll have to change our plans. We've got to go tomorrow morning. I can't leave Martinique tonight. Something very urgent has happened, and I've got to work all night. Martha can go to Papignon with Marcus. No, Ralph. I think he should stay with you. He can't be left alone. You see, anyone in your condition must be very careful. Martha! You promised me you'd always take Snoopy wherever you went. What have you done with him? Now, Christina, I don't think this is quite the moment to you. Martha means that she has to leave, and so she's put Snoopy into her valise. Uh, that's all right, then. I'll forgive you, but don't do it again.
Martha. Tony. I'm sorry to start you, miss. I saw the house in darkness and realized that the lights had fused. So I thought I'd come in to see if you needed something. It's strange because the fuses are all intact. Perhaps the mains were struck by lightning. Ah, yes, I understand his heart drops. I'll go and wake up the pharmacist and be back as soon as I can. Oh, Miss Martha. Are you quite sure you'll be all right while I'm gone? Look, the gates of the villa are open. I think we should take a look inside. I don't like the looks of this. You stay here. Miss Caldwell. Are you all right? Don't worry now. It's all over. Did you recognize him? Where'd he come in? It was a mains field in the road near the cemetery.
You feeling better, Inspector? No, oh, damn it, my love. I have a fever high enough to kill a horse. Now, what the devil is going on? Miss Martha said she saw a light. In the cemetery, she thought, just before she was attacked. As though somebody was, well, uh, signaling with a flashlight. Let's give it a try. Is everything ready? I've stationed a group of men on the other side of the graveyard. He won't be able to escape. Okay. Let's not waste any more time. Let's go. Hello? We're ready. We're going in now. Come on. Give the order to shoot. All right. <clears throat> if you decide to confess, we can relax, both of us. Eh, Mason? Do you recognize this? It's yours, isn't it? Yes. Do you want to explain what it means? It's a medal, can't you see? A supernatural symbol. Do you take part in black masses? Yes, I do. One of the many that honor the Lord of Evil. There are many more than 20 in the vicinity of London. Well, it's not against the law. And human sacrifices and ritual murder. Have you ever heard that spoken about? You killed them, didn't you? Confess and you can drink the whole bottle. I didn't even know them. You continue. Now, begin again. Good morning, Doctor. Did you sleep well? I didn't get a wink all night. Has he confessed? Uh, I can't make a dent with that one. He's crazy and all juiced up. All I know is that his name is uh, Rudy Mason, he's English, and that he worships the devil. That's it. That should be enough. Yes, enough to arrest him, but not enough to close the case and be able to go home to bed. <coughs> By the way, Doctor, what can I do for my cough? It's killing me. <laughs> well, to cure the flu takes eight days. And to ensure yourself against its coming back, go to bed and stay there. <laughs> Inspectors can't do that, unfortunately. <laughs> Martha's in there. Can you prevent her from seeing him? I'm sorry, but I can't do anything about it. As you know, your testimony is very important. I'm afraid you must be patient and simply answer yes or no. Take off your glasses. Have you ever seen this man before? Study him carefully. Relax, Martha. 
This will all be over in a few minutes. Is he by any chance the person that you and your cousin Jenny Ascot saw on the country road? And is he the same person that you noticed at your cousin's funeral? This is the last question. Do you recognize him as the man who assaulted you last night in your home? Ah, uh, yes. She only saw the outline of her assailant reflected in the glass door. You think it could have been this man's reflection? Thank you, Miss Colbert. You may leave. away six months so I can catch up on some best sellers. I'll make you out a check. And I want you to wrap this up as a present for Uncle Ralph. Martha, look what I found. Miss Martha. Miss Martha, there's no point in allowing things to get you down. It don't help, you know. Don't do no one no good. Would you like me to put your easel up so you can paint? Princess! Princess! I'm so happy you're not going away after all. It's beautiful. That beats just anything. And he won't run away. Uh, I don't know why you're so kind to me. I have a present for you too, Martha. But you have to play a game with me, or I won't tell you what it is. Your breathing is okay, but not your pressure. With you, Ralph, I can be sincere. You must avoid any type of stress. Any strong emotion could, well, could have severe consequences. Consequences don't impress me, Doctor. At my age, with a ticker like mine, one must be prepared for anything. It's Martha that worries me. She's been so depressed lately. Always alone. At her age, it's awful. If it were not for that little girl, Christina, you know, she'd been a tremendous help. Just look at them. They seem like mother and daughter. Goodbye, Ralph. Bye. Dr. Laurent? Yes? It's your secretary on the phone. She says it's very urgent. Thank you, Rosalie. Hello? Yes? Worried? She should be used to that by now. After all, it's her fifth child. Well, tell them I'll be there in a few hours. I can't come right now. Right, thank you. Uh -huh. Gotcha, gotcha. Aren't I good? <laughs> good going, Christina. <laughs> Hello, Martha. Hello, Doctor. No, thanks, I really can't. I've got to run to see a patient. Is someone sick? <sighs> <laughs> Pregnant. She's pregnant. Doctors always have to rush off somewhere. See you soon, Martha. Bye, Christine.
Christina, I don't understand you. Martha. How did she disappear? Christina? Where are you? I won't have any more of this nonsense. Rosalie, did you call Marcos? I couldn't find him. God knows where he's got to. No, Martha, no. Don't look. We proceed with the autopsy? Yes, fortunately we're in time. If we'd waited a few more days, we couldn't have done it. I'm surprised at you, Ralph. To buy a house right next to a cemetery is surely a rather macabre thing to do. I expect you have your reasons, though I fail to see what they are. The autopsy reports have confirmed your version of the facts. That poor girl died because of an overdose of heroin. Did you find the Neva mark in here? Yes, obviously. Luckily for me, that little girl was killed. Otherwise... Uh, really, I'm sorry. Read your statement, Mallow, will you? By chance, I met the girl two days ago, and we camped just a little ways outside of town. I left her alone for a half hour and went to look for a bottle of whiskey. When I came back, she was already in a coma. From an overdose of heroin. It all happened so quickly, she was dead within a matter of minutes. There was no time to get help. I thought someone might have seen us together, and I was afraid. It was for this reason that I threw her into the ditch and then covered her body with rocks. Good. You can take him back to his cell. Thanks. Now what? We have to begin all over again, Mother. The real murder of Jenny Ascot, Mrs. Breton and Christina, is in circulation again. God only knows what he has in his mind.
Rosalie, where are you going? These school books were Christina's. They've been here ever since. I'm going to give them to Miss Martha. Give them to me. My niece is resting. Poor girl had a bad night. Martha. Miss Martha at home. Yes, yeah, she's on her way down. It is very important that each one of you try to remember exactly your precise movements. I understand how terrible it must be for you, but I'm asking you to cooperate this one last time. Dr. Laurent has explained everything to you, hasn't he? And now will you try to reconstruct what happened that day? Where were you, Marcus? In the servants' quarters. And you didn't hear Rosalie calling you? I was repairing a door with an electric drill. And then you ran to the garden? Yes. When I heard what sounded like a scream, I came immediately. All right. Now return to the servants' quarters and try to repeat your exact movements. Were you at home? Yes, sir. I didn't go away until after Martha had warned Sir Ralph that Christine had disappeared into thin air. Go in now, please. And you, Doctor? After I left Sir Ralph, I only spent a few seconds in the garden with Martha and Christina. You see, they called me from the hospital for a delivery. And that didn't leave a lot of time. Then you got into your car and left right away. Do you mind going with the doctor, Mother? Not at all, sir. And then it was when Dr. Laurent left that Christina blindfolded. Do you know in which direction she went to hide? Huh. How much time passed until you took off your blindfold? Three or four minutes. Well, we'll wait. I stopped the car at this point. I had some candy for Martha and Christina, but since I was in a bit of a rush, I forgot to give it to them. I had to go back. Quite a coincidence. Last time you, you forgot your bag, and you had to go back for that. Being forgetful is not a crime, Sergeant. Yeah, I know. Go back. I stopped the car right here, at the service gate. I took the box of candy and got out of the car. The next thing you did was to run and warn your uncle. Do it now. Three minutes, Inspector. I met Miss Martha in the hallway. She let me know Christina had disappeared. So I began to look for her immediately. I went round to the servants' quarters and I called the driver. But no one answered. Then I was met by Sir Ralph. Is it serious? Heart attack, second to the last few days. Inspector, do me a favor and take good care of her.
There's nothing more anyone can do. This time, his heart didn't make it. He passed away without gaining consciousness. I'm sorry, my dear. I know this must be a terrible shock for you. You want to see him. tonight for Perpignan. The arrangements for transporting the body back to London will keep me away all day tomorrow. You know how he was. He always used to say, real Englishman has a right to return to the land where he was born. Anyhow, I leave you in good hands. No matter what happens, there will always be a policeman in the garden, on the road, near the cemetery. Inspector Durant has given us full police protection, so don't worry. Well, I have to leave you now. Goodbye, Martha. Take care of yourself, huh? There's been a call from Sergeant Muller. He says to tell you your relief will get here around 10 o'clock and to wait until then. Thank you. I have to go out now. Miss Martha is in the living room. All right, there's no need to worry about her. Excuse me, miss. I finished my duty at 10 o'clock, but my colleague seems to have been delayed in getting here. So I wish you good night. Cunning or furry. I'll try the whole cause and condemn you to death. Twenty-one here, receiving you loud and clear.
message received. We'll proceed to the scene of the accident at once. Number 321, over and out.
You can't kill anyone. Your gun is filled with blanks. Your uncle is alive, Martha, but now you are more alone than ever. Ralph was the first one to realize the truth. You killed Jenny, Mrs. Britton, and then Christina. Now you must come with us. Calm down, Martha. Calm down. It's useless anyway. You killed Jenny because she had what you don't have, a voice. You hated her. Her very presence reminded you of your affliction. Everyone thought that murder was that English hippie. But that theory was too simple to accept. Personally, I wasn't convinced there was a homicidal maniac. Do you remember? I tried hard to break that theory. And in order to strengthen your story, you killed Mrs. Britton. And then you pretended someone assaulted you. Christina? She needed to eliminate a dangerous witness. That morning in the garden, the little girl told Martha that she had found the chain with a Snoopy medallion in the woods in the place where Mrs. Britton was murdered. Bad Snoopy, you abandoned Aunt Martha and hid yourself in the wood where the bad wolf killed Mrs. Britton. You're all dirty with blood. You were wounded and I took care of you and made you well again. Now you will have to be punished. You weren't able to predict that Christina would have written all this down in her diary. That morning, your uncle surprised you in the garden, accusing you of the crime. It was a shock for him and he had a heart attack. But we saved him. I'm sorry, but I have to arrest you. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, Fury. Fury said to a mouse whom he met in the house, let us both go to trial. I will prosecute you. Come. I'll take no denial. We must have the trial. Or really this morning... I have nothing to do. Said the mouse to the cur, such a trial, dear sir. I'll be judge and I'll be jury, said the cunning old fury. I'll try the whole cause and condemn you to death. Mm -hmm.